Welcome to Catalan. This is Will Sanchez. My very special guest tonight is Stephen Thunder Lee. First, I want to thank our Uptown Manhattan Neighborhood Network for inviting us to record this show tonight. Our regular studios of 59th Street is being rebuilt, so thank you very much, El Barrio Firehouse, for hosting us. I first met Stephen back in 2005-2006, before he was Thunder. He was just known as Steve, the guy who enjoyed a tall glass of beer after a run at Nike Town. And then something happened. He took off like a rocket. So we're going to learn all about his journey of doing all 50 states. And by the way, he's one of a few that's done all 50 states a marathon in all 50 states in under, in under, I repeat, four hours. A remarkable record. So please welcome to the show, Thunder Lee. Thank you for having me. Well, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Lee, let's get started by introducing yourself to our audience. For example, where were you born? Something about your family? Something about your schooling? I was uh, born in Rangoon, Burma. Now they call Myanmar. I migrated here when I was 16. Uh, I grew up in New Jersey. Uh, mo most all my parents migrate here. Um, my I, I go to King University as, as a um, undergrad school, and I migrate to New York City when I after graduate. Well, you do a lot of migrating here. That's right. <laughs> well, so you were born in Burma. That's right. very interesting. That's right. It's been in the news recently, as you know, because our Secretary of State visited that country. That's correct. Do you, f do you follow? You follow what's going on in that country? Uh, not really. <laughs> I'm busy with my quest at this point, so no. Your quest. So you become a, a, a pure New Yorker, so to speak. Yes, that's correct. Oh, cool. In your home country at that time as a youngster, were you actively involved? No, I wasn't actively involved at that point. You didn't have any fun in, in Berlin? Well, yes, I do, but not as far as far running-wise. So what kind of activities did you do? Uh, mostly uh, we play soccer or football, you call it. Is that country known for its running? No, 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 not that I know when I was grew up. So oh, okay, yeah. so you might be one of the first. Uh, I, w I would say I'm not sure, but you're not yeah. sure. Okay. <laughs> now you mentioned Keene University. Yeah, I went to Keene University in Jersey, uh, Union Union County, New Jersey. Okay. Um, and what was your study? I studied accounting and computer science. At cool. That point. So you got a major in both. Yes. Do you use those those skills today? Yes, I do. So what do you do today? I work for a bank and. As an IT consult, IT related uh, operation, so I, yeah, I use my business knowledge plus my IT uh, knowledge. Oh, excellent! We'll go into that because uh, if if you're doing all these marathons, they must be a very understanding boss, or you have a very understanding boss. What attracted you to join the Nike Town at that time? Uh, the whole thing uh, started with uh, 2011. Uh, I used to work in World Trade at the time. 2000, September 11 happened, and I, I was my office in World Trade Center number four. Oh um, yeah. So um, at the time of the uh, you know the event, I I happened to, I just happened to be in by the building, and then uh, of course one building collapsed. I had to run away from it. So and that's how somehow started. I get triggered me to run. run. <laughs> Wait a minute. You started. Um, I, it's not a funny thing, but you started to run at the oh. day of nine eleven attack. Well. Run away from the build, the collapse the building, you right? Run, so, the one for your life. Run for my life at the point, yes. Uh, and oh then, my goodness! And 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 that somehow awakened your running well, DNA. It's, somehow it amount. You know, I wanted, I wanted, and I want to spend my my life at the, something meaningful. At that, I want to do something different. So I decided to uh, run, and give me uh, you know pleasure, and give me uh, also um, I get it just helped me to I guess go through all these. Uh, the problem that I have at the point. Oh, okay, so, so it's a stress reliever for yes, you. Yes, sort of. I yeah. mean, surviving 9-11 right. would be, my goodness, and you must have lost some friends in that area. I, luckily, I have most of friends, not, they were okay, most, most of my friends okay. and colleagues at the time, yes. Okay, so 9-11 so happened, you started running, right. I guess, local races at that time, roadrunners? Yeah, I was part of roadrunner uh, at the point, I recently joined it, and so I ran like small races, like 5K, uh, you know, half marathon at, at the most I run. Okay. So, so at Nike Town, you joined and what attracted you to join Nike Town? Terrific group. Right, because uh, a friend of mine mentioned at one point saying that, you know, that's 
a training group in Nike Town, and we should go and run it to motivate yourself. Because as you as you know, running by yourself is very tough, and hard to motivate. So you run with a bunch of friends, or people you run with, then that you know make you motivated. So okay. And as I mentioned, you, 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 you were a fun guy. You always had a beer in your hand afterwards. <laughs> but, then, but then even I noticed that, geez, you know, Stephen's running a lot, you know. But then you really ran a lot in the last two years. I think you've done over 60 marathons. That's right. So tell us about your first long-distance run, your first official marathon. What was that like? Yes. Uh, my first marathon was 2006. And that's it. Again, this took me five years to run marathon at that point, since since I started running. Uh, that was New York City marathon. And the year before that, I, I ran New York City, and I, I saw people running in New York City, so I didn't know what was it at the time. I, I saw it in the park, and I saw people were running, and people was going, you know, having so much fun. And just, I told myself I want to do it one day. So 2005, I did, like, I think I got into the Rilato in 2006, so that's how I started running. The oh, you got into the lottery? Right, the first year. Interesting. Right. Are you, are you a New Yorker at that point? Right, I was in New York. You're one of those rare birds. Yes, that's because right. hardly any New Yorkers get into the lottery. And I guess I, I was, yes, it was uh, lucky. I, got, I, I, got into I, it I don't time. know, I think fate. Maybe. It has Maybe. to be because of the, the history that that's we're going right. to cover. That's so right. 2006, you did New York. Obviously, you must have enjoyed it. Oh, I loved it. I'm, I, I was hooked since the first one. I mean, it's like, you know... The first marathon I ran at the, I had so much fun and I want to do it again. And you did it on the sub four. Yes, I did it on the sub four, the first one. That's an excellent time right. for almost anybody. Okay, so what happened after that? Do you continue with Nike Town? Yeah, and I continue uh, training with Nike Town because they have a good training program and met so many friends, so many running friends. It's so many coaches and they keep motivating and they keep pushing each other. So that's, I've been running with Nike since since now. Okay, so ever since it's one of your running clubs is Nike Town. That's right. Okay, so now I think in 2007 you did another two, two marathons? 2007, I believe I did three marathons. Uh, that was uh, Chicago, the year that um, the Chicago cancer doing a halfway, halfway point. Oh, because of the heat? The heat, and, um, I did, and also of course because of Chicago, was, uh, I was going for time at the time. So I did New York City and then Philly following week. Wow. So you months. did all three on the sub four, including yes. Chicago, the hot one. So That's you're right. an all-weather kind of runner. Oh, I, w- I won't say that, but yes, I try to manage to finish stuff. With well, it. then the year after that, what happened? You did, I think, five marathons at some point? I believe uh, 2008, I s- did four or five marathons, mostly uh, outside of the United States at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. You did some traveling. I did traveling. So I did um, Greece Marathon, I believe Greece. Oh, Athens, Austral- you mean the original? Uh, yeah, at, at oh, the right. Oh, beautiful. And uh, I did Australia, I did Istanbul Marathon. Oh, okay. So uh, you skipped the states. Some states, yes. And, but then you did a dramatic jump, from, I think from 5 to, to 32. Right. 32 Marathon and 5 Ultra for 2011. And 2012, this I did... This year. This year, I did... 30 marathon and 5 ultra. 5 ultra. That's right. amazing. So let's go back to 2011. How do you decide to do 32 marathons and 5 ultras? I mean, that's a big jump. I wanted to do 50 states originally. That was my goal. We got, um, But I want to do it within 10 years when I reach at least 50. So, and then, and I finally, I met Aquino, one, one of the events, which is your, one of your guests. And he was running crazy amount of marathon, I think, every weekend. And so, Decided that you know that's how we became good friends at this point, and he kind of sort of pushed. We go and kind of push each other to finish 50 states. Oh, okay, you you inspired each other, right? But also doing 50 states of logistics got to be daunting. So, so he was he probably had an ulterior motive in sharing expenses, right? We I think we both have our, our goal, and at the same time we have to share logistic wise. I mean, it's just impossible to go by yourself and do all these races races you've done with Kino and other people to yes, share the experiences. Yes, that's correct. Every races I share with runes, sometimes I share a car. I mean, pretty much every, all the races. I mean, you have to. In order you to, have to. And, and it's remarkable. You did 30 marathons, or 32 in 2011. Was there any one or two where you got to the starting line and you said, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to finish this. That, uh, that's couple of like that at that one point. I remember one one time very clearly I did 
2011, I took, we call it double weekend, which is basically you run Saturday and Sunday, a marathon. And uh, so different states. Different states. So, so that means you got to drive or fly or right. rush right. to the so, next day. That's right. So I did one, one the weekend before that, I did um, Indiana and Minneapolis states. And then following weekend, I, I decided to do um, Idaho, no, Iowa and um, South Dakota. The second weekend, I after the marathon on Saturday, I was really tired. I was just don't want to do it anymore. And then I remember calling Kino, saying, that, you know what, I'm going to come back. I'm, I don't want to do this anymore because I'm just really not ready for this. Uh-huh. And and somehow he convinced me to say, you know, and I told myself that, that let's see how it go next, when I wake up next day because I'm already here already and I want to see how it go. Uh-huh. And he kind of, you know, told me the same thing. So I, I talked to a couple of my friends, same thing, I said, you know, see how it go. So next day I wake up and I, I felt better and I, I went out running. And it was a struggle, but I, I managed to finish. And Under four. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. So you were in your 40s at that point. I, I was, at the time, I was 39. 39, right. okay. You know, your body needs a lot of time to recover. Somehow you did it. Yes. And do you follow any kind of special diet during this time? <laughs> I know you love your beers, and oh. you still do, right? <laughs> right. I, I had no diet, no restriction on my diet. I, I pretty much eat anything I feel like eating and drinking what I feel like drinking. Oh, okay, so you're on the seafood diet. You see food, that's, that's you right. eat it. That's right. I, whatever I see, I eat. Right. It's amazing uh, stamina and... Uh, and willpower, and I, I didn't know that Kino was a motivational uh, force as well as a great runner. Right. Well, I think as a runner, as a running community, I think we all like to push each other. And sometimes, you know, we have doubt our own, and we like to. And then sometimes, some people see it, that you have capability, and and then they push you, okay. and you you'd be surprised that you know. So they saw ability that you were doubting. Since right. Sometimes. They, yes. That is that. Is, I'm astounded. I, I, I'm going to repeat myself because uh, that is a, a, an amazing accomplishment. I believe this year you, you did an Ironman as well, the, the inaugural New York City. That's right. What was your time for the Ironman? Uh, my time was under less than 12 hours. I don't, 12 know, exact, hours. I don't know exact time. But. That's a golden standard. To do it under 12 is... Right. Rem- and that was not an easy Ironman. Right. It, was, it wasn't easy. It was my first Ironman. <laughs> Actually... <laughs> My first, my first, uh, my first try. I had never done try before that Ironman. You just pick an easy one. Oh, let me just. <laughs> well, I guess in your backyard. Right. So I say New York City. Let me sign up for it, and that's how I did. And that's it. how you did it right uh, off. And, and you had to sign up quick because it sold out in eleven minutes. Right. So I had to sign up through different channels to um, sponsor, like like charity event type of uh, sign up. So yes. Oh, so you did it for charity. Right. I just signed up for the, the Iron Man charity thing that they you could. Oh, the Iron Man charity. Right. Oh, okay. That's right. So, how much f- f- fundraising did I you think do? You, I didn't have to raise the money. I just had to shell out them. Like, I think regular registration was like $900. Right. I think I paid $1,500. Cover, oh, cover that's, the, that's the not difference. too bad. It's not too bad. Because yeah. some of the charities you had to raise right. sh- unbelievable amount of, amount of money. Right. So how, what, was your, what was your training like for that? Because now you had to worry about the swimming and the biking. Right. So um, I didn't really have t- much time for training on weekend as because I was running marathons every weekend or so. So mostly I ran um, doing my swimming and uh, biking and doing the weekdays. And so on. so on, we did after I came back from marathon, and we the Monday to Friday or Monday to Thursday, I either bike or swim. And this is with a with a with a friend, or you do that? I I have some friends I I, I swim with, uh, bike with, and one of my friends who run is Warren. He's uh-huh. a part of Whippet, so he oh yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, and so he did he, he did his first. Uh, right, he did. Man. Yeah, we both did his first. Uh, his and first. wait a minute, he's remarkable. This is Warren, right? Right, correct. He didn't he didn't know how to swim when That's he, right. when he, he signed up. Right, he didn't know how to swim either. So he's well, wait a minute. So you motivated him? Right, so, like I say, we, everyone's motivated each other, so that's help. That is amazing. Oh, so you were a, a, a member of the Dashing Whippet for a while. Correct, that's right. And, and then you had to travel to the States. And right, so <laughs> I never run. Ambassador. That's correct. <laughs> really, your strategy in, in doing these was to feed off from your fellow other runners. You weren't necessarily following a guru's you know, path to, to running a marathon because, you know, they'll have a training program, you know, so many miles this week, the nutrition, you, you sort of did it by seat of your pants. Right. I, I guess, yes, I, I, I don't like to follow traditional plan, like people say, which, you know, you're supposed to follow. I just go by what I think my body need, needed to at the point. You know, sometimes you need to rest, you I rest, and then, and then sometimes you just have to 
uh, eat, you eat. And so that's the way I follow it. I just follow the way my, how, how, I, how I feel. So, and also, like I said, you're running with friends. It's kind of, it's really nice the fact that they encourage you and they push you and they motivate you somehow. It's not necessarily, let's go and run and say, I'm going to run and you, you want to join us. You know, it's like something like that and you end up doing that because, you know, it's, running with friends is always nice. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily that you, the fast runner or a slow runner. It's all, every runner is encourage each other. I mean, people that run four hour or five hour, uh, they are actually the more encouraging for me than the like fast runner because you know they are out there running four five hour. It's a lot. It's tough for run marathon especially, and they. I can't see myself doing that. If I if I wanted that, I'd probably just quit. Or but they had such such a like determination to finish it. So you know those are the ones that you had. I, I, I mean they really motivate me. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Very interesting philosophy. So you went by, listen to your body, because, it, you know, that's the standard mantra, listen to your body, but you really did listen. So when you were hungry, you ate, and when you were tired, you rested, right. and you you said, well, I don't have to follow a plan that says I got to do 12 miles today. Right. Whatever, whatever it is that my friends and I wanted to do, because you were all motivating each other, and you had, and you had goals, similar goals, right. either to run 50 states, or to do the uh, triathlon, or the Ironman. Right. Very interesting, very interesting. Was there any time where you were injured or, you know, you had to give a plan B into place at all, kick in? Yes, um, I think um, the, almost the end of the year this year, I, I feel like I, was, I, I physically and mentally I was done. That's like, Dead? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like I don't want to do it anymore. And, uh, of course, me and Kino had planned it that we were going to finish in Hawaii as 50 states finisher at the last state. So, in order to follow that, we I had to finish all these states that I wanted. I had to do. It's not like I can back out. So, that was that was tough. And then I, some people just keep motivating me, you know, just do it. And also, and I want to finish and stuff for all the 50 states. So I had to repeat some of the states I had to go through, which is um. So I had to repeat these states that I already done. I had to run an SF4 because some of the states that I run as ultra states, so they don't count as, as a, they count it as 50 states, but they don't count it as SF4 states. So I had to go back and repeat a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you did an ultra, and I said, oh, wait a minute, that right. doesn't count in terms of the uh, SF4 of, of the sub 50, I mean right. the sub fours. Interesting. Right. So I had to repeat it. And I also want to, also want to, um, again, better time so I end up repeating some more states for better time for even myself. though you did sub four you right. wanted to do even better time right because it just, you, this is remarkable it's story. just because like again everybody like to push each other and see you know that's how amazing it is that people push you in a certain way that you My just don't goodness. know well let's talk about the place at work how did they uh, react to your being doing all these runs they must have been very supportive yes I, I'm, I was very lucky um, because I work as a consultant basis so I could take off if I needed to, and they had no restrictions. So I get my work done. So I do work a lot of hours doing Monday to Fridays, like 60, 70 hours sometime a week. And but, so I try to do as much as I can during those days for my work, and then on weekends my time, basically my race time, yes. And also they are very, I guess, understanding. Otherwise I, w I couldn't do this without. They, must, they are obviously very understanding right. because that's a lot of time. Right. And what about your family? Are they understanding too? My family, no, I run, but they don't have any idea that I run that much. Uh, so I just told them that I run, and then I, I let them know that I, you know, I'm okay. But uh, they, because they don't, they cannot relate it to how how I feel and how I run, and they think I'm crazy. Being Asian parent, they're very, very, very worried a lot. So you know, you, I try not to tell too much about. But I did tell them that I'm okay and I'm, I'm here and so on and so forth. But I don't tell them like I'm doing. 100 mile today or I'm running oh, you know, 24 okay. hours. Okay, they would worry for right. you. Correct. But but they love all those postcards you sent yeah, from oh, all over the world. Yes, I, I, yeah. That's one of the things I do is I send postcards to my friends when I run all these states. So I send a postcard to my, my parents also. So they have, and I send one for myself also for everywhere I go. Uh, every, oh, so you could document, do you, if you right. forget. Where was I in North Dakota? Right, exactly. <laughs> and that's one of the challenges part about running 50 states is like, like you say, running is, is much easier now because you've just run in a four hour or whatever amount of time you just have to deal with. Looking for hotel logistic wise and also looking for postcard is very painful. 
Looking has, for a postcard? Yes. <laughs> which got in seven states you can't even find one. Really? Which state can't you find? Oh a postcard? my god. I could tell you the two stories. I I've been to South Dakota and I couldn't find postcards for so No like, postcards in South Dakota. Well places I I want to. That's no place. <laughs> so I have to go drive like about sometimes an hour, an hour and a half. And while I try to catch a flight. And, and to, to see I could get a postcard. Sometimes I, I get lucky if I could find an air, airport. And I think you maintained a little book of your of your adventures and people signing it. Right. My friends make it both for, both for me and me and Kino, one of you finished 50 states. So he has his own book? Yes. Oh, okay. This is documenting your right. your accomplishments. That's right. That's yeah, right. That is, that is amazing. Any other state that really surprised you in terms of, wow, this, this marathon was really unusual? Well, I think um, South Dakota was one of the unusual ones because, like I said, that's the that state that I was really at the point depressed what I was talking about that I, I didn't want to do it anymore. Okay. That was one of them I, I, I have memory of and also Delaware which is you know which you, you know it's that's I think one of the smaller states or one of the one of the, sm the smaller states in, and then it's so hard to do marathon in that state because you were by yourself basically it's because it's just, it's not not many marathon in that state and to, to schedule it to do 50 states it's very difficult sometimes to do Delaware so interesting so Delaware was it did Kino want it with you or would you had to one of those yeah we Kino was there at the time oh, okay that helped yeah, the help. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, that's, that is fascinating. Uh, any uh, any famous ultra marathons have you done? I have done uh, Comrade this year, uh, which is we, they call it down down year and um. Or the downhill version. Downhill version of so every year, every other year they are up, up year and down year, and next year is up year. The up year. Uh, so yeah. I plan to go back and do oh, it up really? year. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, do you know Francis LaRosse? Yes, we ran the same year. The, yeah, yeah, yes, he did the, the first year, time this year. Right. I think he's planning to go next year too. I'm not sure. Yeah, I haven't. I saw him, but I haven't talked to him what his plan is. But I it would be nice to go back for a bunch of friends also. And, and of course, you met uh, Dave Obelkovich. Yes, he's run it over the last eleven years in a right, row, and he right. runs it. He's going to run it every year. Yes. Um, nice thing about the comrade is if you if you are to call it, I guess if you run over ten plus, you get the your own bit number for for for, for uh, life. I think he calls it the green. Yes, bib. it's he called green bib. Yeah, yes. Yeah, Wait life. a minute. Is that one of your future goals to get ten? <laughs> you I, have to do it consecutively. I learned, right, that's I learned. right. You have to do it consecutively. No, you don't. You said you, you could do don't any have, ten. Okay. But wow. I'm the first North American to wow. get a green number, and I'm very proud of that. This is what it looks like. I'm not sure I want to do that. How much did it cost? Do you have any idea how much out of pocket for the last three years? I know you shared expenses right. and all that. Give us an idea. I mean, not to the penny. You probably do know to the penny. <laughs> what was the, what was, how much would somebody need to budget to do this? I would say minimum $500 per state. If you $500 per state? Yeah, for traveling, yes. Because race registration is depending on how you register. It's, you're talking about nowadays $100 minimum. Or oh, hundred dollar is you yes, know, average, average, average. Unless right. it's New York, with two hundred and fifty. Right, correct. And, right. So I'm um, except for New York. I'm just saying like if hundred dollar is average, and then you talk about airfare or depending on how close, how far, you have to car rental, hotel, and those add up to be I would say at least five hundred dollar minimum. Five hundred dollars minimum. Yes. Per state. Per state. And the closer you are, the probably you probably have cheaper. Uh -huh. You're driving. And oh, you share with especially when you do that double, you said a, a right. Saturday, and, a, and right. then I guess the Sunday one only cost you the travel time. Right, that's right. So yes, so that's the reason why we I and we are not doing double. It's not because we want to do it because it's for, for you know for pain. We just do it because it save money. To save money, right? And it's a dog to pain. I'm gonna gonna <laughs> right. I'm gonna do it very painful. Right, right. So that's um, so I would say about and then the farther you go on the west coast, is, which is cost a bit more. Because you, some places you, it's hard to get there. So I, I, I would imagine like South Dakota is hard right, to get to. That's right. South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming. So those are tough states. Yeah. Oh, do any of them have really interesting names in terms of the marathon? I've seen like the flying monkeys or the flying pig or something. Is there right. any interesting names like that? Um, they all seem to be very interesting to me, I guess. Like Alaska, that we they call it wildlife, hempy, hempy. That's kind of interesting, I thought. Alaska, was, Alaska, yeah. Yeah, we did some did Alaska. That's we after I I did, and okay, that was okay. Taiwan too. Okay, all right. So interesting. So you just did your you finished your fifty year. That was in Hawaii. Correct. That was a few weeks ago. Right, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Correct. Correct. All right. So uh, in closing, what are your future plans now that you've done your fifty? And uh, I, uh, 
what are your goals for for 2013 and beyond? <laughs> uh, I want to do uh, seven continents, so that's one of my goal. And so far, I finished four continents, so I need three more continents. Have you done Antarctica yet? That's 2015. 2015 on my list. Yeah. I think you have to take a boat, right? And and if the uh, the weather conditions is such, you may have to run it on the boat, right? That's right. That's one year I think it happened once. I don't know. I don't know exactly like yet, but that's one year that they had to run on a boat. On the boat, you know. Correct. That's so right. you prepare. Oh, obviously, you prepared to do anything. Well, yeah. We, I guess as a runner, you you know, you just you have no choice. You just do it what you, what you can, and yes. Okay. Well, listen. This is your camera. You say something to you, the people that helped you on this quest of doing the 50 marathons. What would you want to say to them? I just want to say all my friends, running friends, for supporting me, encouraging me to run. And um, it's been a great pleasure meeting all these people, all this journey. So thank you very much. Listen, on that note, you know, wish you great success in all your future endeavors. And uh, the seven continents should be a piece of cake after doing 50 states. And then eventually, you'll, you'll, maybe you'll take a year off and relax and, uh, and <laughs> I don't know, and do something else. <laughs> maybe, but I, I do want to um, encourage people to run as much as they can. It doesn't matter how slow or how fast. Just keep running. You and Kino should do on tour, you know, because between the two of you, you've seen the world and know everything about it in terms of, uh, you know, where the best place is to run and eat. Right. Well, at least for drinking beer. Yes. Drinking beer. All right. <laughs> well, listen, thank you very much. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you it's very a pleasure. much. pleasure.